Hi, my name is Harry McQuillan and I'm the manager of the Cosumnes River Preserve. I'd like to welcome you to this first edition of an online program called In the Field. Although I'm technically an employee of the Bureau of Land Management, I actually have six bosses. That is, the six implementing partners that came together to form the Cosumnes River Preserve. In 1987, the Nature Conservancy and Ducks Unlimited brought together the first thousand acres located just south of Sacramento to create the Cosumnes River Preserve. Between 1989 and 1994, the Bureau of Land Management, California Department of Fish and Game, Department of Water Resources, Sacramento County, and the State Lands Commission joined in the effort to bring together more lands to create an area for the public. As of this summer, the preserve purchased its 60th property, bringing the total acreage to about 46,000 acres. So come along with me today and I'll show you what makes the Cosumnes River Preserve special and how, together with our partners, we manage this area on your behalf. So a lot of what you see out here right now is probably what the Great Central Valley of California looked like before European settlers arrived. Back in those days, there were thousands of acres of freshwater wetlands, riparian forests, um, vast expanses of valley grasslands that supported vernal pools and every walk of life from salamanders to grizzly bears. The Cosumnes, which is an Indian word that loosely translates to the salmon people, is the last major undammed river flowing out of the Sierra Nevada mountain range. For millions of years that river has spilled its contents on the valley floor as it makes its way down to the delta. And this provides excellent habitat for the willows, cottonwoods, and valley oak trees that you'll see along the way. It also provides excellent habitat for young uh, salmon and other fish that are making their way down to the delta and the ocean. Today, the preserve provides not only the last remaining functioning floodplain habitat in this area, but it's also the only protected wetland habitat between the Butte Sinks, which is up in Northern California near Chico, and down to Merced County, which is down in Southern California. This makes, it for, uh, this, makes this area a critical wintering area for wintering waterfowl and water birds. Every year, we host more than 200 species of birds at the preserve, most of which are waterfowl and other water birds that arrive in September and then they spend the winter here and then come March they head north again to their breeding grounds. While some of the preserves wetlands are natural, others of them look the way they do because we make them look that way. We use a series of pumps and levees and valves and floodgates and things like that in order to move water around to create the type of habitat that we need in order to support the wintering waterfowl. Well, one of the goals of the preserve is to use natural processes such as natural flooding from the river and natural wetland areas to create optimum habitat. The fact is that most of the wetlands in the Central Valley of California these days have to be managed in order to meet the needs of the wintering waterfowl. Part of our strategy here at the preserve to provide wintering waterfowl habitat actually involves farming. In fact, I might be the only federal land manager around that's responsible for overseeing a thriving organic rice farm. One of the goals of the preserve is to be a living laboratory. That is to show how meeting the needs of wildlife can also meet the needs of the local communities. We call it wildlife friendly farming. And in this case, it's worked out really well between us and the local community and the local landowners and farmers. In the case of the organic rice farm behind me, we contract with local growers to grow rice, obviously for a profit. After they harvest their rice, we flood the rice and it provides about an extra thousand acres of wetland habitat for the wintering waterfowl. The same is true at Staten Island where we grow about 7,000 plus acres of corn. After the corn is harvested, those fields are flooded, which provides excellent habitat for the greater sandhill cranes and other waterfowl that use this area in the winter. Obviously, the focus out here is the birds. At any given time, this place is literally blanketed with thousands and thousands of wintering waterfowl. Our most famous guest is probably the greater sandhill crane. Of about the 8,000 birds or so that come to the Central Valley, about half of them spend the winter here, between here and Staten Island. These birds have survived for millions of years in the river bottoms, marshes, and meadows of the great Central Valley of California. They are truly a sight to behold. Another notable visitor to, to the preserve are the Swainson's hawks. Unlike the cranes that come here in the winter, the Swainson's hawks come here in the spring, they spend the summer here nesting, and then in September they return back to South America to spend the winter. Cranes and hawks aren't the only species of birds that we have here. Obviously, we have thousands of pintails, gadwall, widgeon, mallards, uh, white-fronted geese, 
We also have a myriad of songbirds that live in the forest and the upland area surrounding these wetlands, including warb warblers, vireos, swallows, finches, flycatchers. At the start of the boardwalk, you can read the interpretive displays and then wander along the pathway and the boardwalk out to a viewing platform where people spend a lot of time just sitting and listening to nature and watching their favorite bird species. Although we manage the Cosumnes River Preserve to protect natural habitat and wildlife, we also manage this place for people like you. We have about 11 miles of trails throughout the preserve, some which are short and easy, like an easy walk along this boardwalk, or some that are long and challenging, like our seven mile hike through the Vernal Pool grasslands out at the Howard Ranch. For children and people with accessibility issues, we have about two miles of paved trails, including part of this boardwalk. Another special feature of the Cosumnes River Preserve are the magnificent Valley Oak Riparian Forest. These forests were spread along many of the major river systems in the Central Valley of California before European settlers arrived. The few hundred acres of valley oak trees that remain here at the preserve are probably among some of the last remaining oak trees in California, valley oak trees that is. These oaks are more than just important habitat for birds, squirrels, possums, and other species. In the true spirit of Aldo Leopold, these trees are living monuments to history. Think about it, a lot of these trees were just acorns or saplings when, when the early Europeans arrived, and others of them were here before the American Revolution occurred. Another one of our goals here at the preserve is to protect these trees and over time to grow more of them for future generations to enjoy. Now you may wonder what these boxes are up here in these trees. These boxes are homes. They're primarily homes for wood ducks, but other species like kestrels and owls and even possums and squirrels and bees use them as homes. We have a, a group of volunteers that's on our wood duck box team and they spend several hours each year and they build them and they install them and they go out and they clean them and they check them on a regular basis and at the end of the year they're able to tell us how many species have used them and what kind of reproduction the wood ducks have had and it's a pretty important program that's linked to one of the nationwide uh, wood duck box programs. The preserve provides a lot of recreational opportunities and probably one of our most popular ones is the canoeing and kayaking. We recently installed this new boat ramp and it gets a lot of use out here. People will go out here and they'll head out of Middle Slough and they'll link up on the Cosumnes River and they're able to canoe about three miles or so of the waterway before the brush and stuff gets too thick and they can't go upstream any farther. Whether it's your only stop at the preserve or the beginning or end of your visit, make sure you stop by our visitor center. Inside the visitor center, we have offices for staff, a conference room that's available for public use and also exhibits and displays that are designed specifically for you. We have interpretive displays, maps, books, brochures, t-shirts, and a hands-on exhibit especially for children. Literally hundreds of school children come to visit us every year as part of our environmental education program so this hands-on display gets quite a workout. Most of our visitors end up out here on the deck where they eat lunch, enjoy the birds, enjoy the view, and read the interpretive panels. This is a favorite lunch spot for most of the people that come here. So on behalf of all the implementing partners here at the Cosumnes River Preserve, I'd like to thank you for joining me in the field. We take our responsibility to manage the preserve very seriously, and anytime you'd like to offer us your suggestions, we'd be more than happy to listen. We'd like to encourage you to visit us often and enjoy all that the Cosumnes River Preserve has to offer.